at Word Lovers. What's up? My energy is so good today. I absolutely love this video I got planned for you. Get your passports ready, get your bags packed, because I'm going to be talking about international music festivals that are on my bucket list that should definitely be on your radar too. Let's get into it. What's up guys? Welcome back to Living by the F Word. For anyone new here, my name is Jess and I talk about F words on my channel that I'm passionate about. I absolutely love festivals. It's one of my favorite F words. And a few months ago, my girl Shirley Delgado tagged me in a challenge to come up with my ultimate festival schedule for a year if money and getting off work was no option. The truth of the matter is I barely scratched the surface on international festivals that are on my list. So that is what I'm going to be talking about with you today. Pretty much this has been my style of traveling to festivals for a long time. It's my favorite thing to do because you kind of kill two birds with one stone. You get to see a city, you get a new country experience, new food experiences, meet new people, form connections globally, and also take off a festival while you're at it. So it's really my favorite way to travel to festivals and I'm really excited to talk about the list I have here for you. Just a little disclaimer, I will be talking about festivals that are outside of the United States, which is where I am from and where I live. So that's why they're going to be international to me from the United States. I also am not going to be referencing any festivals that I've already attended internationally. So for example, I've attended BPM, SXM, and Vision, Tomorrowland. They will not be a part of this list because I've already attended them. And I'm also going to leave out festivals that I already mentioned in that other video that I'll have linked below. Just because I don't want to be repetitive for anyone that may have watched that video. There's plenty of information in some of my other videos. I just want to focus on some of the festivals that I didn't cover. So without further ado, let's get into this list. I'm going to be going in order from where they are in the year from January through December. Let's go! Up first on the list, I have Rainbow Serpent, which is a medium-sized festival, about 12,000 people, that takes place in Australia. In particular, it is in the Southeastern Territory of Victoria, so probably fly into Melbourne, love Melbourne, love that city, and then travel from there to Rainbow Serpent. There's a variety of different types of electronic music. And in addition, they also have some live music that they've added like reggae and hip hop. So there is variety there, but they do have a heavy focus on Psytrance, Tech House and Techno. So I think I'd really enjoy this festival just because there's also some wellness and yoga and panels. So it's kind of like a transformational event and it's been going on since 1998. So I feel like throughout the years, they've really probably progressed to a really amazing event that I'd like to try out. You guys, I'm so ready to send it to this one. Annie Mac presents Lost and Found Malta. I mean, why not? I mean, this festival typically, based off uh, past lineups, falls over my birthday weekend. So this would be like an absolute ultimate sick birthday weekend, whatever, if that happened. The dates have changed, but typically I've seen that it takes place early May and that is when my birthday is and I would love to go. So for anyone that doesn't know, Annie Mac is a very well-known Irish DJ. She created her own festival on Malta, which is a Mediterranean country in between Italy and Africa. The vibes just look so awesome. Pool parties, castle parties, rave boat parties. You get the gist. It just seems like a fun destination boutique festival that I would love to attend with a heavy techno and tech house lineup. We are festival up next, which is located not too far from London in England, the UK. This is a festival that has won many awards and it's under 10 years old. So I really would love to attend. They've recently added camping after five years. So you could tell that they are well trusted and very well organized as far as getting to add these new amenities to their festival. Uh, there's pretty big labels that are represented at this festival. Lots of labels that I love to hear and lots of big names in techno, tech house, and house music. Just one of the biggest 
festivals on my list as far as travel because it's only a six hour flight from where I'm located. I live near New York City. So to get over to London, it's a six hour flight, which is basically the same amount of time for me to go to California. So why not go to another country, have a new experience and get to experience We Are Festival. Heading into June, we have some sick locations on the list. First up, I have Melt, which is located about two hours from Berlin, Germany. It is located in what they call the City of Iron because it takes place at an abandoned coal factory and it's surrounded by a massive lake. So it just seems like these really cool industrial vibes, really beautiful from what I've seen, just seems like the photos would be amazing. Feels like the atmosphere would be amazing as well. And they have a variety of options as far as walk-in camping, which is included in your ticket. You also can do car camping, which would be added cost or RV camping, which would be added cost. And something else that they have is a green pass, which basically contributes to fundraisers that they support and missions they support as far as reducing your carbon footprint at festivals. So I thought that was really unique. I've never really seen an add-on to contribute to rainforests or, you know, things that are helping the environment. So I really liked that and I thought it would be awesome to try this festival out. Meadows in the mountains. This has been on my radar for years and that's because I found out about it through some UK fashion designers that I've been following for quite some time. Betsky's Boutique and LOM Fashion. Anyone that knows my channel know, like has been a part of my channel from the start knows that the only bum bags and festival fanny packs that I use are from Besky's Boutique. I absolutely love her small business. I love her fanny packs. I wear them in real life at festivals. I have a custom F word one. She is just my go-to if I want unique festival bum bags. And LOM is a pretty popular UK fashion designer for festival wear because of her bright colors and fringe. So these two ladies are posting about Meadows in the Mountains a lot because people are wearing their fashion there and that's how I found out about it. So it takes place in the mountains of Bulgaria, very small intimate fest. There's only four stages. They also have yoga and wellness. And I just have seen videos of their sunrise sets and it just looks like such a vibe, like the mountains in the backdrop, the fog, the sun rising. You could just like, tell it is so amazing to be there and i love smaller intimate fests you get to meet more people network so why not new country fest looks amazing i'd love to go up next i have sonar Sonar is located in Barcelona, which is one of my favorite cities that I've ever traveled to. I absolutely love Barcelona. I love the culture. I love the architecture. I love everything about that city. So I would love to check out this festival, which has a heavy focus on electronic music. It's been running for over 25 years. And in addition to that, they also have a conference called Sonar D, which heavily relies on the connection of creativity and music and showcases technology within the music festival space with an avant-garde focus. They also have various concerts in addition to this larger festival. This is just one of those festivals where I feel like you can go to Barcelona, you could check out other cities in Spain like Madrid, Valencia, or you could pop over to Ibiza, which is only an hour flight from Barcelona. It's very easy to get to from there. So this is something you can kind of like plan as you're scheduling this festival into your schedule as you travel overseas. All right. A lot of people probably know about this one, Awakenings. It's one of the largest techno festivals in the world that is very well known. It's only 30 minutes from Amsterdam, the city of beauty, the city of bikes. Absolutely beautiful city. Amsterdam is so great to travel to. You have a lot of variety there. You can obviously go to the well-known coffee shops there. And also they have beautiful art museums, beautiful scenery. You could ride your bike around. Actually, it's a little dangerous to ride your bike if you're a tourist, not gonna lie. <laughs> but it's so much fun. Great, great city to travel to. I absolutely love cheese shops. They have cheese shops, you guys. I mean, come on, you could go in and just sample cheese all day. I love it. So this is just a festival I would love to attend because I'd get to go to Amsterdam again. 
it is not far from there and there's over a hundred DJs on this lineup. It's a heavy, heavy techno lineup in beautiful location. So you can't really go wrong. Fusion Festival is my go-to when it comes to those little TikTok videos that are like, what's the festival you wanna to go to that you haven't been to? For me, it's Fusion Festival. This has been on my list for so long, but it just kind of hasn't happened because it's always the same week as Electric Forest, which is one of my favorite festivals. But not only that, people kind of say that it's like the Burning Man of Europe. They have a lot of large scale art and also the ticket system is like a lottery. So it's really hard to get tickets. Basically you sign up to get tickets and then it's like randomly selected the people that get to go. Like you don't really have a say in trying to go. It's just, they give you tickets randomly is from what the research I've done is what I've come up with. And so that's kind of why I've never made it there. This next one might be new to some people. Calvi on the rocks, which honestly just gives me this whole Ibiza vibe in my opinion. So this is a week long electronic music festival that is held in Calvi, which is on the Mediterranean island of Corsica, which is in France. I don't think a lot of people really even know that France has an island. I think a lot of people just think of the mainland where Paris is and Nice and stuff like that. So I think that this would be a really fun experience. Why I say it reminds me of like an Ibiza style event is because that's pretty much what Ibiza is like too. This festival basically runs parties, uh, secret beach locations, there's beach parties, there's boat parties, and then at night it switches over to all the nightclubs the island has to offer. I think you can't really go wrong. It looks absolutely beautiful. It kind of looks a little more inclusive, maybe something people wouldn't really know about, not as touristy as Ibiza, so absolutely would love to go there. Gotta get my techno fix in. I mean, I have a lot of techno fests on this list. And next up I have Kappa Future Fest, which is located in Turin, which is a city in Northern Italy. It's not really well known. I mean, I guess it's kind of well known, but most tourists don't really go there. But the city is known for its Baroque art style architecture, Renaissance architecture, and it looks so beautiful and it's in the mountains. So the actual venue of Kappa Kappa Future Fest is at an abandoned car lot. Once again, super industrial setting. I feel like I've been saying industrial a lot, but it's just the truth. I don't know. There's something about these techno festivals. They really know how to set the vibe. They know how to set the tone to fit with the music. It's not so much about production. It's really more about the techno. It kind of reminds me a little bit of like Movement Detroit in a way because there's not like a lot of high production. It's about the techno, it's about the crowd, it's about the environment you are in. And they kind of give this like kind of, not creepy, but like, it's really like, almost like old fashioned grunge in a way, these venues. So it looks super cool. It's a huge outdoor event. Why not? Roar and Loud is a larger scale event, about 50,000 people, and it's only one day. And it's not too far from Dusseldorf, Germany, over 400 DJs. I mean, it is insane for a one day festival, but to me, it just seems like something that would be manageable to add into your schedule if you were traveling over in Europe. You could just pop in, hear some beats for the day, attend that festival and pop out. There have even been times where I've gone to multi-day festivals for just one day so I could get a feel for it. And that's kind of like the vibe I feel like I get from this type of festival where you could kind of just attend and get something chucked off your list in addition to other things you have planned. Electric Love Fest, pretty well-known festival solely because of their stage production, massive stage production, beautiful, beautiful vibes, multi-genre electronic music festival, and they call their location the Colorful Playground because it is lush mountains, super green, just a beautiful environment from what I've researched. And it's located in Austria and not too far from the East Alps. So I feel like you get this vibe of 
being surrounded in nature, which is why they call it the colorful playground, because Earth is the most colorful place on Earth, of course. There's lake beds, there's trees. I absolutely love natural or nature-based festivals. I talk about that a lot here on my channel. I'm an earth sign, so I feel very connected being at a festival that is outdoors, but also where you can connect with nature. So it just seems like something that you kind of are win-win because you have the high production and then you also have this nature-driven good feel to it. Um, so yeah, I mean, I typically don't really care for high production festivals. It's not really something that makes me go to a festival. I mean, it's cool. Don't get me wrong. Of course, it's cool. Things like Tomorrowland, EDC, you know, Mystery Land, stuff like that with Q Dance, all that stuff is really awesome to look at. Of course, it's beautiful, but it's just never really like the top of my list when it comes to choosing festivals. So I feel like this is like a good balance for me because you get that, but you also get camping and nature. So I'm all about it. Exit Festival is one of Europe's longest running music festivals, and it's also won a plethora of awards. Their mission and their vision alone is enough to make me want to go there, and I just want to read from their website what that is for you. Exit's mission is to spark positive social changes and speed up the evolution of human consciousness through creativity, education, charity events, and having a balanced environment that combines humanity and earth both in local regions and globally. It started as a student social movement in the year 2000. Exit has been the only world festival that was created from a wish for progress and freedom. The festival's well-known identity developed through its unique eclectic music program, creating numerous socially responsible campaigns as well as an active support to charity, ecological and cultural movements and organizations. Exit is not only a festival, it is a movement, a symbol of progress and a motor of change in the society, but also the leading platform for creative industries, not only in Serbia, but in the Balkan region as well. That particular region has been torn apart by decade-long bloody wars where young people still grow up full of hatred towards people of neighboring countries. We have accepted the challenge to change this reality to make Balkan a symbol of unity and progress. Wow, when I researched this festival, I really was like, that in itself is what the world needs, is this type of change, this type of unity. Um, it does feel like recently you would feel like we would be in a place in 2021 where everyone could get along, but it's just not the case. And that particular region of our society really has gone through some damaging, harmful, traumatic events. So I just think that this is an amazing festival with an amazing mission that I would love to check out. Friends, 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 I know that a lot of people know about this one. This is Shambhala, which is a five-day festival that is held in British Columbia, Canada. Most well known for their harm reduction program on site. I mean, that is why I am most interested in it. I have known about this festival for years. I just have never had the chance to attend because typically it's in the same month as Burning Man. So it just makes it hard to get off work for both of those events and to travel that far. They're both kind of on opposite sides of North America for me. So being East Coast based, it's just a little harder to get to. But what I love about this festival, just like a lot of most transformational festivals, is that they are formed on eight pillars. So that means that they have pillars and structures that they live by, that they value, and you know, Shambhala is extremely well known because of this. I found out about this festival through my life coach who at the time was not my life coach. I just met her at a festival conference and that's Brits Robbins. I just haven't been able to get there unfortunately, but knowing her and just knowing everything I've heard from other friends that have attended, I just know that I would love it and I would absolutely love to go because transformational events really are moving. And there's just something about 
countries and festivals that understand the importance of harm reduction programs at their festivals. It's something that really bothers me about United States festivals that we don't have these types of programs enforced due to certain laws that were put in years ago that really are not benefiting us to progress as we should in society. All right, and last but certainly not least, very well-known techno festival, of course, Time Warp. Ah, I love Time Warp. When they brought it to the United States in 2014 to Brooklyn, I went, I loved it. You know, it's just this very warehouse style event, but they do have this really cool type of scenery and production that they put on inside. Um, so it just seems like something I would love to go to the original or somewhere else and like send it to Brazil because they also have a location there where they run Time Warp. So heavy techno, all the techno DJs that you would normally see, you know, Maceo Plex, Carl Cox, Charlotte DeWitt, Adam Bayer, uh, who else? Richie Houghton, you know, like all those guys, they're always on these lineups. There's so many more too. Adriatic is one of my favorites, you know, it really just depends, but it's heavily techno focused. And I just feel like why not go to Germany, go to Brazil, go somewhere else and experience this festival. It's just, you just got to do it, right? I mean, I personally feel like that is the best type of travel that you can do. And it's what I've been trying to do until, of course, we got stuck in this mess. We're going to get out of it. And it's going to be so important for everyone to get back into it and have a great time traveling. So I really hope that we can hit all these festivals. That is my last festival, but I just want to throw out some resources for you guys of uh, some websites that I reference and really look up to as far as when I'm researching festivals. First up, we have my friend Vito's website, which is Music Festival Wizard. He is a co-founder of this blog. It's a blog that is basically run by him and only two other people, and he literally is the Music Festival Wizard. I just want to have his life. He is traveling all over the place, traveling all these events. And on their blog, you can search festivals by country. You could search if it's camping or not. You can search the attendance number. So if you want to go to smaller festivals, if you want to go to mega festivals, and you could look up flights, where the location of the event is. It's just, they have past lineups. They, oh, they just are killing it. It's so inspirational. They are my go-to when I'm researching festivals and it's where I got a lot of information for this video. So definitely go check them out. Of course, you could also check out my blog, livingbythefword.com. I do have festivals listed by region, but just so you know, I only have festivals on my blog that I've personally attended. So when you click on that particular festival, it will show you some small facts about attendance, type of music, if there's camping or not. And then below that, if there's any blog posts that I've written about it, you will see those below. I really hope to start incorporating the content I'm putting out on this YouTube channel on the blog as well so that you have both to reference and you're not trying to skip through my videos. You could also reference those documents on my blog as well. So that's coming soon, but that pretty much wraps it up for this video. Thank you guys so much for checking it out. Don't forget to subscribe, especially if you're an F word lover, especially if you love festivals. I am going to be talking about a lot of festival content just because I've bottled it up for so long. Now we don't have festivals and I'm home and I might as well talk about all the knowledge that I have about them. So yes, please, please subscribe if you haven't already. Share this with your friends, you guys. Word of mouth really helps. Like this video, you know the drill. Thanks so much, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.